welcome to the land of Fae. The world is in disarray and the balance of power has shifted to the wrong side. But these druids can't be bothered by such nonsense. They have their minds set to different matters, matters of great significance. Since time immemorial, they followed a single creed. There ain't no party like a druid party. To begin a game of Fae, you will randomly place one druid in each space on the board, being careful not to repeat a color in a given region. Then, lay out the scoring cards and randomly distribute a secret spirit card to each player. This spirit card will tell you which druid color you are trying to score, and will remain hidden until the end of the game. On your turn, simply choose one space and move the druids there to an adjacent space. There are only a couple of restrictions. You cannot move those druids into an empty space, and once a group of druids reaches 7, they cannot be moved. There are some rivers on the board, but they are mostly meant for setup and can be moved over. After a move, if a group of druids is completely isolated, a ritual occurs and scoring may happen. Reference the leftmost scoring card, and if the ritual is occurring in a space that matches the terrain of the bottom half of the card, the ritual is disrupted and all of those druids are removed from the game. Otherwise, scoring will begin. If all five colors are represented in the ritual, remove any lone druids of each color from the game. They will not be scored. Count up all the remaining druids, and each color represented in the ritual will score that many points. If the ritual occurred in the terrain that matches the top of the scoring card, additional points are awarded to those druids, and whoever triggered the scoring will keep the card as a bonus point at the end of the game. Play continues until there are no more legal moves or all scoring cards have been taken. You'll then reveal your spirit card and add the bonus points you've accumulated to that color, and whoever has the most points is the winner. There are a few lines in the Manual of Fae describing sacred rituals, endangered clans, and appeasing spirits. Honestly, it's all fluff. It's just an excuse to paint a pretty board, make some nice looking cards, and create some miniatures of dubious silhouette. And that's totally fine. While I've never been a huge fan of games that prioritize setting and theme over gameplay, I do appreciate ties that help me marry the actions that I take and the story that the game is trying to tell. Fae doesn't really do that, but for such a short and simple game, I don't really mind. And as I've delved into the deeper end of the board game pool and find myself enjoying and playing deeper, more involved games, I'm coming back into an appreciation of lighter fare. Games that don't take multiple hours to learn and teach, games that don't send me scouring online forums for rule clarifications and edge cases. So with that said, I've really been enjoying my time playing Fae. It's not revolutionary and it won't light the world on fire, but for a game that takes all of 15 minutes to play, it offers some surprising depth and builds an enjoyable tension that keeps me coming back. What separates a good move from a bad move isn't immediately evident. In fact, I didn't even understand how the winner came to victory after my first game. The ramifications of my moves were hidden behind a veil. And that's Fae's brand of brilliance. What seems like a simple game of gathering your own druids together in order to score big points is complicated by the fact that every player can move any piece regardless of their objective. In fact, it's often a good idea to move pieces that aren't your scoring color. Not only will it set you up for scoring in the right territories at the right time, but it can also throw people off of your track. Hidden scoring objectives lead every player to carefully decipher everyone's moves and intuit their intentions. You will score other colors over the course of the game. It's unavoidable. So you must be careful that you don't unintentionally gift more points to your opponents than yourself. If you can figure out which colors aren't in play, you can safely siphon points into the void. Since games move at such a brisk pace, you quickly learn to set up scoring opportunities for future rounds and when to make decisive cuts at your opponent. Watching them see the anger as you figure out which color to banish into the ether is an especially fun delight. I won't call Fae one of my favorite games, but for such a small package, both physically and conceptually, it's clever enough to entertain when you're looking for a quick shot of board gaming.